reaction of organic compounds. Covalent bond cleavage. The breaking of chemical bonds is called cleavage or fission. There are two types of cleavage, homolytic cleavage, also known as radical cleavage, and heterolytic cleavage, also known as ionic cleavage. Homolytic cleavage occurs in a non-polar bond involving two atoms of similar electronegativity. A single bond breaks symmetrically into two equal parts before because they have same electronegativity. So the bond breaks symmetrically into two equal parts, leaving each atom with one unpaired electron resulting or you call it as free radicals. Heterolytic cleavage or ionic cleavage occurs in a polar bond involving unequal sharing of electron pair between two atoms of different electronegativities. A single bond breaks unsymmetrically both the bonding electrons are transferred to the more electronegative atom. So two electrons or both electrons will be transferred to more electronegative atom. Homolytic cleavage between the non-polar bond, so the atoms are or the atoms have same electronegativity. So this is homolytic cleavage. The bond breaks symmetrically. One bond or a bond consists of two electrons. So these two electron or this bond breaks and one electron or each electron divided equally to each atom. To each atom. Resulting in free radicals. So the free radicals are species which has unpaired electron. This is how you draw free radicals. You have to show one electron at each atom or at each free radicals, one electron. Free radicals are reaction intermediates, not the final product. Reaction intermediates means they are very reactive and many may only exist for a split second. They are very reactive, so they will react with other compound. The movement of a single electron is shown by a curved half arrow. So this arrow is half-headed arrow. Half-headed arrow means the movement of one electron only. If you draw fully headed arrow, if you draw fully headed arrow means two electron moves. But we have to show the movement of one electron only. So that's why it is half-headed arrow. Half-headed arrow indicates one electron movement only. So the reaction are often catalyzed by sunlight or UV light or heat. Heterolytic cleavage. In heterolytic cleavage, the breaking of the bond can happen in two ways depending on the electronegativities of the carbon atom and the atom attached to it. The positive charge of carbon is called carbocation, while the negative charge of carbon is called carbonion. Carbocations are electrophile or Lewis acid. Carbonions are nucleophile or Lewis base. Relative stabilities of radicals. So the radicals product of the homolytic cleavage, the product of free radicals. So we're looking at the stabilities of the radical. The carbon free radical, so this carbon free radical because carbon has one unpaired electron, so we call this carbon carbon free radical. This carbon free radical that is attached to three hydrogen atoms is less stable than carbon free radical that is attached to two hydrogen and one R group. This R group is carbon attached to other atoms, means this is another carbon. 
and then this free radicals is less stable than carbon free radical that has two R groups and the most stable free radicals or the carbon free radical has three R groups attached to three R groups. So you call this free radical as methyl primary carbon because one carbon attached to this carbon so primary free radical carbon, secondary free radical carbon, tertiary free radical carbon. So more stable radical form when the carbon has more R groups. For example, CH3 free radical is less stable than CH3 CH2 free radical. This carbon is primary carbon. This carbon secondary carbon free radical because this carbon has two carbon attached to this carbon and this free radical carbon is the most stable free radical compared to all of them because this carbon has three carbon attached to it. So this is tertiary carbon. This is the most stable free radical. Increasing alkyl substitution so the CH3 alkyl, we call it alkyl, increasing alkyl substitution, increasing radical stability. So the effect of alkyl substitution on free radical, as you can see the stability, okay, radical carbon is electron deficient. This radical carbon electron deficient because if you count the number of electron this carbon is 2, 4, 6, 7, not octet. This carbon is not octet because it has 7 valence electron only. 7 electron only. So this radical carbon is electron deficient. They are stabilized by substituents such as alkyl group. CH3, CH3, CH2 or other R group C. C attached to others so that is R group so this free radical carbon is stabilized by the R group or the alkyl group alkyl group is electron releasing group or electron donating group since our free radical carbon is electron deficient it has seven carbon only so this R group is electron releasing group means it's giving electron it's like this R group donating the electron to the free radical carbon that's why when you have more R group free radical becomes more stable higher number of alkyl group higher stability of free radical relative stabilities of carbocation is the same like the stabilities of free radical carbon so the carbon or carbocation with no R group attached on it is the least stable. So this one less stable than the carbon that has one R group and then less stable than carbocation that has two R group and the carbocation that attached to three R groups is the most stable carbocation. So this is primary because one R group or alkyl group attached, secondary two R group, tertiary three R group or three alkyl group attached to this carbocation. So more stable when the carbocation attached to more number of alkyl group. Increasing alkyl substitution, increasing the carbocation stability. This is because Carbocation is electron deficient, same like the free radical carbon. Free radical carbon has total 7 electrons at the carbon for free radical, but for this carbocation, it has 6 electrons only, 2, 4, 6. 6 electron only, so not octet, not enough 8 electron. So this carbocation is electron deficient. They are stabilized by substituents such as alkyl group because the substituent, the alkyl group or the R group 
is electron releasing group or electron donating group. So this R group donate the electron to the carbocation, make this carbocation more stable. So when you have more R group or more alkyl group, this carbocation will be more stable due to the alkyl group characteristic. Alkyl group is electron releasing group. So number of alkyl group increase, stability of carbocation also increase. Next, we look at the stabilities of carbon ion, the negatively charged carbon here. So the most alkyl group attached to this carbon makes the carbon ion less stable. So carbon ion here, it has two, four, six, eight electron in total. For this carbon, it has eight electron here, eight electron and the R group, the R group here is electron donating group. This carbon has enough electron and it receives more electron from this R group. So making the carbon ion with most R group attached, making it less stable. So more R group on carbon ion means less stable. So this 3R group, less stable than 2R group, less stable than 1R group. The most stable carbon ion is the carbon or carbon ion with no R group at all. For the same reason, because this R group is the electron donating, this carbon already have enough electron. So it does not prefer to receive more electron from the alkyl group. Means in carbon ion, more R group means less stable. No R group attached, more stable. Increasing alkyl substitution in carbon ion, decreasing the carbon ion stability. So this is the reason the carbon ion is electron rich. It has a lot of electron here, 8 electron, electron rich means this is the place where high electron density is. So they destabilize by substituents. Electron rich and then the alkyl group substituent give more electron. So it does not prefer to receive the electron as it is high electron density. So it does not prefer to receive the electron from the R group because the R group is electron donating group or electron releasing group. So number of alkyl group increase, stability of carbon ion decrease. Reagents and sites of organic reactions. We have two terms here that you have to understand, electrophile and nucleophile. So in order to understand the organic reaction, you have to understand this two term first. Electrophile is electron deficient species which accept an electron pair from a nucleophile. Means this electrophile means electron living. Electrophile, electron living, it loves electron because it is electron deficient. Can be either neutral or positively charged, means not enough electron, electron deficient. So this electrophile can be neutral, can be positively charged. That is electrophile. Nucleophile electron-rich species that can donate a pair of electrons to form a bond. So nucleophile is opposite an electrophile. Nucleophile is electron-rich species, means nucleus living. Nucleus living. Nucleophile means nucleus living. So this nucleophile electron-rich can be either neutral or negatively charged. Electrophile, neutral or positively charged. Nucleophile, neutral or negatively charged. All molecules or ions with a free pair of electrons or at least one pi bond can act 
as nucleophile. So these characteristics here are electron rich. If you look at free pair of electrons mean it has lone pair of electron. It can be nucleophile. And if the molecule has pi bond, if it has pi bond, means it has single bond and it has pi bond. So four electron for double bond if triple bond six electron in total means that is electron rich species so it can be nucleophile if it has lone pair if it has pi bond so it can be nucleophile those are the characteristics for nucleophile example of electrophile so example of electron deficient species lewis acid Oxidizing agents and polar molecules can be electrophile. Lewis acid is electron pair acceptor. So it can accept electron. Electron pair acceptor can be Lewis acid like AlCl3, FeCl3, BF3. If you look at here, AlCl3, the Al is the central atom. The central atom, it does not have four bond in total. It only has three bond, Al, Cl3. So this Al is not octet. This is incomplete octet. The central atom, incomplete octet. So it is electron deficient. So this is Lewis acid or electrophile. Same goes to Fe, only three bond, three Cl. So this Fe is electrophile here and then BF3 again, BF3 not four bond, only three bonds. So this B incomplete octet, so it is electron deficient species. And then cations, the positively charged, obviously positively charged is electron deficient and carbocation is electron deficient species. Next, oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent, the one that undergo reduction. So Cl2, Br2 can be electrophile and then polar molecule can also be electrophile such as HCl and HBr. Example of nucleophile, Lewis base. Electrophile Lewis acid, nucleophile Lewis base. So the Lewis base can be electron donor the electron donor or it has the molecules with lone pair or the electron donor and ion obviously negatively charged means electron rich species and then carbon ion carbon ion the negatively charged carbon carbon ion negatively charged carbon nuclear form means electron rich and then pi bond molecule in alkene, alkyne, aromatic ring. So these three can be nucleophile. Functional group and reactivity. Functional groups create reactive sites. In a molecule, when you see the functional group, that is where the reactive site of the molecule. Electron rich sites react with electron poor sites so nucleophile will react with electrophile electron rich nucleophile electron poor or electron deficient the electrophile so here electrophilic site molecules with low electron density around a polar bond if you look at the c double bond o C and O, this is the polar bond because they have different electronegativity. Oxygen is partially negative, carbon partially positive. The oxygen is partially negative because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Means this oxygen prefer to attract electron towards itself. So means this oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So when this is the partially negative, means it is slightly negative, this carbon here is slightly positive, delta plus. So the slightly positive is where the low electron density. So here, the carbon here is low electron density site. 
in the carbonyl. And in halo alkane, group 17, group 17 more electronegative than carbon. So group 17 atoms has partially negative here and carbon partially positive. So the carbon that is attached to any atoms in group 17 has low electron density. So this is the electrophilic site at the carbon when the carbon attached to group 17. And then next, the C single bond OH, the hydroxyl compound or alcohol, class of compound alcohol here. So C single bond with O, again, O partially negative because O more electronegative than C, making the C partially positive. And then this partially positive C is low electron density. So this is the electrophilic site, the carbon that is attached to the OH. This carbon has low electron density. Next, let's look at the nucleophilic site molecule with lone pair or with pi bonds. NH3, here this N has lone pair. So this is where the nucleophilic site at the lone pair. And then H2O, water. Oxygen in water has two lone pair electron. So the oxygen in water is the nucleophilic site. OH minus. OH minus the negatively charged and then it has three lone pairs. Three lone pairs. So this oxygen is the nucleophilic site. Cl minus negatively charged ion is the nucleophilic site. And then Next, multiple bond, the one or the molecule that has pi bond, for example, in this double bond, it has one sigma bond, one pi bond. So this is where the electron rich site at the double bond is the electron rich site. So here is the nucleophilic site. There are four general types of organic reactions. First one is addition reaction, elimination reaction, substitution reaction and rearrangement so these four are the general types of organic reaction we can classify them into these four the addition reaction addition in addition reaction all parts of the adding reagent appear in the product the two molecules become one means you have two reactants initially and then you will have one product at the end so you will know that is addition reaction and reaction of compounds with multiple bond okay here multiple bond you have multiple bond here c double bond c it reacts with x y so initially this compound has two carbons and four hydrogens at with one X atom, one Y atom. In the product, whatever in the reactant stay in the reactant and the addition you must add into that reactant. Means at the product, you need to maintain the number of carbon 2, number of hydrogen 4 and then new reactant. Here, new reactant added into the reactant. So the product will have the carbon bonded to X and another carbon bonded to Y. Okay, each carbon bonded to the each atom of this reactant. So there are two types of addition reaction, electrophilic addition and nucleophilic addition. First, let's look at the electrophilic addition. The electrophilic addition Reactions involving C double bond C and C triple bond C. So if you have the multiple bonds between the carbon, you will know that is electrophilic addition. It is electrophilic addition. So the pi bonds are electron rich and located above and below the plane of the bond. So here we start with start with this double bond this double bond 
the nucleophilic side nucleophilic side always 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 nucleophile attack electrophile electrophile can never attack nucleophile start with nucleophile attack the electrophile so you start with here the carbon carbon double bond the multiple bond here electron rich side this is nucleophilic side the nucleophilic side will attack addition of hbr into this c double bond c so h and br the here is the nucleophilic it will attack the electrophilic side electrophilic side if you look at between H and Br, Br is more electronegative. So, Br delta minus H delta plus. So, the H here is electrophilic side. So, here the nucleophile, carbon-carbon double bond, will attack the hydrogen. It will attack the hydrogen. And then, this carbon will make bond. It uses this two electron. Two electron in the pi bond is used to form bond with the hydrogen. Initially, this carbon has two hydrogens, and then when this carbon uses two electrons from the double bond to form bond with the hydrogen, and then that carbon will have three hydrogen bond attached to it. That is the first step in electrophilic addition. And then, when this carbon uses two electrons in the double bond, making the carbon beside that carbon, making this carbon positive, carbocation. This carbon becomes carbocation, positively charged carbon. And then, here, when the carbon form bond with this hydrogen, these two electrons, bonding between H and Br, these two electrons will be transferred to the bromine. These two electrons will be transferred to the bromine, making bromine Br minus. A pair of electrons or two electrons here transferred to the Br, making the Br has a pair, one more pair of electron. So Br minus negatively charged bromine. And then I've said before the nucleophile will attack electrophile. Electrophile can never attack nucleophile. So this Br minus electron rich, electron rich nucleophile. Nucleophile will attack the electrophile, the carbocation here and it used the lone pair from Br to form bond with the carbon here. This is the final step of electrophilic addition. And then, nucleophilic addition, nucleophilic addition, electron deficient species which accept an electron pair from a nucleophile. Again, nucleophile attack electrophile. Nucleophile attack the electrophile. Electrophile can never attack nucleophile. Nucleophile will attack electrophile. Here we have addition of carbonyl with HCN. This carbon here, as we learned previously, this carbon here is partially positive because this oxygen here is partially negative. So this carbon here is the electrophilic site electrophilic site so nucleophilic addition because this cn with lone pair so the cn with lone pair is the nucleophilic site so this is the nucleophile cn with lone pair it will form bond with the carbon here since this carbon has four bonds already and it need to form one more bond here so the double bond one of the double bonds so we use this bond two electrons here transferred to the oxygen making this oxygen has one lone pair so this can form bond with cn this carbon it can form bond with cn here 
and then leaving C single bond O with one lone pair electron at the oxygen here. And then that's step number one. Step number two, when this is the nucleophile because it has lone pair, now it is the nucleophile, this will attack the electrophile H. It will attack the electrophile H. Okay, because this H become electrophile, it will attack the electrophile H and then it will form bond OH. This is the final step of nucleophilic addition. So electrophile means electron living, can be either neutral or positively charged. Next type is substitution reaction. Substitution reaction, two reactants exchange parts to give new products. So here initially, this carbon attached to 4 hydrogen and then reacts with Cl2. At the product, one of the hydrogen is replaced with one chlorine atom. And then here Cl2, one of the chlorine atom is replaced with hydrogen from the carbon. So this is the substitution reaction. Two reactants exchange parts or exchange the atoms to give new products. That is substitution. Reaction of saturated and aromatic compounds is often substitution reaction. We have three types of substitution reaction. Free radical substitution, electrophilic aromatic substitution, nucleophilic substitution. These three types, so you have to specify electrophilic aromatic substitution, not electrophilic substitution only. It's electrophilic aromatic substitution. Free radical substitution, the first type of substitution. Free radical, most common reaction of alkanes. So free radical is the reaction for alkane. This alkane here, methane, is a type of alkane. So it reacts with Cl2, free radical, the condition it must in presence of sunlight or UV or light or heat. Okay, so you have to write the condition of the free radical substitution on top of the arrow. So write down light here because if there is no presence of light, this reaction cannot happen. It needs the light for this reaction to happen. So here's substitution. This hydrogen replaced with this chlorine and this chlorine here replaced with this hydrogen. That is the free radical substitution for alkene. Next, electrophilic aromatic substitution. The second type of substitution, electrophilic aromatic substitution. Characteristics of all aromatics compound. That's why the name is electrophilic aromatic substitution. It involves the aromatic compound. For example, here, benzene ring. This benzene ring, we know that each carbon has one hydrogen attached to it. And then it reacts with Br2. This FeBr3 here is the catalyst. And then this hydrogen is replaced with one Br2 atom. And the Br2 here is replaced with one hydrogen atom. And then benzene has six pi electrons delocalized in six pi orbitals that overlap above and below the plane, means it is electron rich. Okay, six, ele six pi electron because one pi bond, two pi electrons. In one pi bond, you have two electrons, mean that is pi electron. So in the benzene ring, three pi bonds, six pi electrons in total. Delocalized means the position of the double bond keep changing. Okay, delocalized, that is what delocalized means. Next, nucleophilic substitution, the third type of substitution, nucleophilic substitution. 
OH- reacts with CH3I. So this OH- is the nucleophile negatively charged, I- minus nucleophile negatively charged. And this OH- replaced the I and CH3I means this carbon attached to 3 hydrogen and this carbon also attached to 1 iodine atom. So this OH- replaced the iodine. So it substitutes this iodine here making the iodine I-. minus. Same for this one. I- minus replaced the Cl making CH3CH2I plus Cl-. minus. So the nucleophilic substitution, most common reaction of alkyl halide. So if you look at the reactant, this one alkyl halide means it has group 17 atom, halogen. Okay, Usually nucleophilic substitution, the reactant is alkyl halide. For electrophilic aromatic, the reactant is a aromatic compound. For free radical substitution, the reactant must be alkene. That is substitution reaction. The third one is elimination reaction. Eliminate means remove. We remove, eliminate. So this elimination reaction is opposite of addition reaction. A single reactant splits into two products. Here we have a single reactant. We have CH3C, CH3CH3. The C attached to Br. And then eliminate the Br, you want to eliminate the Br and eliminate the hydrogen, any hydrogen and at the carbon. So eliminate one hydrogen, eliminate the Br from this compound. So eliminate Br, it will become Br minus and eliminate hydrogen, that hydrogen will react with OH minus base to produce water. So in this elimination reaction, usually we use base OH- or any base to get rid of the hydrogen. So for example here, if you eliminate Br here, eliminate 1 Br and then you eliminate the hydrogen from this carbon, you need to draw the double bond between this carbon and this carbon because you remove Br from this carbon. Remove hydrogen from this carbon. So the double bond at the product must be between these two. If you eliminate Br from this carbon, eliminate hydrogen from this carbon, your double bond must be between these two. If you eliminate hydrogen at this carbon, eliminate Br at this carbon, the double bond must be in between these two carbon. So that's how you identify where the double bond supposed to be. Elimination reaction will produce the double or triple bond product. This is the method. Elimination reaction is the method to prepare compounds with multiple bonds. If you want to create multiple bond products, use elimination reaction. The final type of reaction is rearrangement reaction. It is just a single reactant undergoes a reorganization of bonds and atoms. Means nothing is added, nothing is removed. You just change the position of the bonds and the atom. If you look at here, the C double bond N and single bond OH, and then reacts with acid. That carbon double bond with O, this O, before the double bond with N. But at the product, the carbon double bond with O. And then the carbon single bond with N. So this is rearrangement reaction. Change the position of atom or the bonds in the compound. No addition, no elimination. That is rearrangement reaction. Thank you.